Coming up tonight, the Attorney General seeks to clarify confusion over the curfew. Meanwhile, the police promising to enforce the no beach rule this weekend. And we have the inspirational story of a college graduate with cerebral palsy. News is brought to you by Alive. Welcome to Our News and thanks for joining us. I'm Jared Higgs. Topping news tonight, one day after confusion erupted in the Senate over whether Attorney General Carl Bethel tabled the most recent proclamation last week, Bethel insisted there really was no confusion and anyone who suggests otherwise is creating political mischief. George Obey reports. He is well aware that there is no confusion as to the legality of these documents and their effectiveness in law. And any suggestion otherwise is pure political mischief. Outside of the cabinet office today, Bethel stated that after reviewing the tapes, the documents were tabled in the five day time span and those seeking to spark confusion are engaging in political mischief. PLP Senator Fred Mitchell posed this question during Monday's Senate meeting on whether Attorney General Carl Bethel tabled the most recent proclamation on the state of emergency within the five day period. What was just laid was the proclamation of the, of the state of public emergency. Isn't that beyond the five days, though? Bethel said to his recollection, the proclamation was tabled. Um, to my recollection, we, we clearly tabled the proclamation, and I signed and dated it. Uh, it was a, the proclamation of the new emergency. What? Uh, uh, um, uh, um, and I signed it in the afternoon. I signed it in the morning. I withdrew it in the morning, remember? And I tabled that in the afternoon. Um, the minutes that I've seen in the draft minutes states that the meeting opened and the proclamation was tabled. This sparked a back and forth between the two, resulting in Bethel calling for the Senate to suspend until Wednesday to allow time for him to review the tape of the previous sitting. If that is what you recall, then the question you ask yourself is why are we why are you laying it again? Because it's already laid. And then of course if it were not done on Friday and it's done today, the question again arises, is this constitutionally permissible? I mean, that, I mean, the government finds itself in a fix, which I think it would be wisest if you actually sorted this out now, as yeah. opposed to be acting yeah. in vain. For the avoidance of doubt, I will, I will get the tape. Um, as, as quickly as we can, but as far as I'm concerned, the proclamation was tabled. Bethel reassured residents that emergency measures are still in place and there is no need for confusion. The curfews are still and lawfully in effect. All of the social distancing measures are lawfully in effect. Or any confusion was occasioned by the clerk of, of the Senate, who was uh, mistaken. Reporting for R News, I'm Georgie O'Bain. Progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Davis has accused Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis of letting power get to his head. This after he announced the closure of public parks and beaches this weekend. Kyle Joaquin has more. Davis once again hit out at the Prime Minister saying it appears as though Minnis has become excited with the power of being the competent authority and question his rationale behind keeping beaches and parks closed in New Providence in Grand Bahama this upcoming holiday weekend. He's not only excited, I think he's now becoming overwhelmed by the fact that he could do things as he is doing without, account without accounting to anyone. The PLP leader joining the list of several others questioning the Prime Minister's rationale behind ordering public parks and beaches closed on New Providence and Grand Bahama for the holiday weekend. While holidays are known as a time when Bahamans flock to beaches, Davis asked why not just police them rather than closing them down? Doesn't seem to be based on any scientific or medical advice because if, we are, if it is open now, why can't it be open over the weekend? Uh, yes, you may have concerns about uh, persons gathering. I would have thought the answer to that would be just to ensure that the beaches are policed sufficiently to ensure that um, the protocols established for stopping the spread would be adhered to. When he first announced that beaches would be reopening last month, Minnis said the way Bahamans behaved and followed the protocols put in place would determine whether they would remain open for the Independence Holiday weekend. Davis says this latest measure doesn't support the Prime Minister's latest pronouncement. 
given the fact that the country hasn't had a positive COVID-19 case since June 14th. I think it's gone to his head now. And, and, I, and as you pointed out, I think the, the closing down of this weekend, the beaches for this weekend, speaks to that. During his monthly press briefing at PLP headquarters, Davis also used the opportunity to hit out at Attorney General Carl Bethel and the confusion that ensued as questions arose over whether he tabled the most recent proclamation of emergency last week. From all accounts, it was not laid within the five days because if it were laid in the five days, why would the Attorney General seek to lay it yesterday and to use the words out of an abundance of caution suggest to me that it was not laid on Friday, therefore it will be outside of the five-day period. For our news, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Meanwhile, Commissioner of Police Paul Roll promising increased patrols this holiday weekend. He told reporters today that the no beach policy on New Providence and Grand Bahama will be strictly enforced and warned against independence, motorcades and marches. Jasmine Brown reports. The police commissioner was adamant that police will be out in full force this holiday weekend to put an end to any type of illegal activity, whether it be a trip to the beach or participation in a protest. I expect people to stay home. Roll's comments come a day after Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis announced in the House of Assembly that beaches and parks on New Providence at Paradise Island and Grand Bahama will close over the Independence Weekend. The closure starts on Thursday, July 9th at 10 p.m. and ends on Monday, July 13th at 5 a.m. Minnis said the closure is a means to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The Prime Minister gave a, a, is there, there's an uh, executive order that the beaches will be closed. The beaches will be closed and uh, I'd ask persons to abide and uh, hopefully we'll soon get out of this pandemic and they'll be able to go on the beaches and enjoy themselves on the beaches. And I would say to them, do not go to the beach because we're not going to allow you to go on the beach. We, I have to enforce it. Rule said that enforcement will include officers keeping a close eye on the shorelines this holiday weekend. He also cautioned against protests and demonstrations as he railed against a recent matter outside government house. You're not going to go to government house because I'll be there waiting for you. Or you're not going to go into Rawson Square to mess with Queen Victoria. I, I, I received a request and I denied it. And y'all still defied my, my orders and went in front of government house. The commissioner added that he has also turned down requests for motorcades over the holiday weekend. There were a few requests for uh, motorcades and rallies. I did not approve them. And based on Article 15 of the emergency orders, they cannot happen and they will not happen. So I say to members of the Bahamas, do not go out, do not attempt to go out and uh, participate in any, any uh, motorcade. They were not approved. Uh, we'll, we'll allow motorcades later. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Police are investigating an early morning murder in Baintown. According to reports, at around 6 a.m., a group of people were walking through a track road near Scott Street when they discovered a man's body with gunshot injuries to the head. EMS personnel were called to the scene where they pronounced the man dead. Police later learned that the man is a resident of the area who is known to them. He is believed to be in his 30s. Three people are dead after two vehicles collided in West End, Grand Bahama last night. According to reports, it was shortly after nine when police were called to a traffic accident at the junction of Queens Highway and Windsor Drive in Boodle Bay. Two vehicles, a black 2007 Mazda SUV with two passengers and a champagne colored 2006 Chevy Cavalier with a lone driver collided, causing serious damage to both vehicles. The occupants of those vehicles, ages 29, 23 and 39, all died on the scene. Police are investigating the matter and urging motorists to drive within the speed limit. Despite several power outages over the last few weeks, Minister of Works Desmond Bannister maintains that the frequent load shedding experience last summer will not plague residents this summer. You've had outages related to the weather. You've had outages related to transmission and distribution. You've had outages related to lightning strikes. And you've had outages regrettably related to human error. Uh, there have been several in the east and there have been three or four in the west. Um, any, even, even the great cities in the world have those kinds of outages. And we have, to, uh, we have to improve transmission and distribution of DPL. And that's the next target. But we, can't, we can't fix them all one time. 
The National Insurance Board has experienced several challenges in the payout process during the coronavirus pandemic, according to NIB Minister Brensel Rowell, who said while they work through those challenges, Bahamians should calm down. Jillian Gray has that. As hundreds continue to seek unemployment benefits from NIB, Minister Responsible Brensel Roll said Bahamians should calm down as NIB is working swiftly to service the public. Yes, like I said, there have been some noise in the market. I urge the public to calm down. We will not, we will not, um, not do our job. We will make sure anyone who is entitled to a benefit will get it. NIB has reportedly paid out over $50 million since the start of the coronavirus pandemic. Roll admitted, though, that NIB has faced several challenges trying to serve the more than 40,000 people who applied. Some of those challenges stem from employers who have either not paid, not filled out the appropriate form, or failed to meet another requirement. He said they are addressing those challenges and added NIB will go after those employers who did not pay benefits. Roll said while he understands the cries of workers, there are always two sides to a story. I went to NIB, I said, listen, here, here's this person who's calling me 10 times a day. Give me, give me a printout, let me see exactly what has happened with these individuals. I was stunned when I realized that they had received 10 weeks of payments from NIB, and they were only concerned about the next three weeks that they didn't get at that time. And that was, and they had received a check um, less than 10 days earlier. Nonetheless, Roll said employees will get the benefit they deserve. He also laid fears to rest that the mounting payouts will negatively impact NIB. The government has taken the position that um, assistance and support needs to be extended. And so this is, this is a government's effort. This is a separate and apart from NIB. So NIB is not going insolvent. NIB is, is, a, is a very strong, strong, strong organization. And, and we will do our job. Reporting for our news, I'm Jillian Gray. Thanks, Jillian. Still to come, what Bahamians think of this weekend's beach closure? Stay tuned. The police chief promising a renewed focus on force discipline and training as he insisted that some officers have lost their way. It is my intention to realign the markers so that the practice of discipline as we knew it is returned. You corporals must accept your responsibility as first line supervisors and perform the tasks required to ensure that every constable fully understands his or her role in this organization. As I believe, some have lost their way. Thus, we're gonna train you with those supervisory skills that are required for you to do your job. During a combined law enforcement intelligence course held at police headquarters, Paul Rule told more than a dozen officers that their performance is vital to the reputation of the force. Today, what you see here is an improvement, an attempt to improve our internal service by better qualifying ourselves to provide the service. Expectations have a central role in influencing satisfaction with services. Bahamians offering mixed reactions to the closure of beaches this holiday weekend. Some residents say their independence celebrations will not be the same. Bertie McDermott reports. The announcement by the Prime Minister that beaches will be closed this coming Independence Weekend, getting mixed reactions from the public who took to social media to share their views. While some expressed outrage, others applauded the move. One resident said, Bahamians don't know how to behave. This is the right move. 
Another said, thank you for saving more lives. The Bahamas health system cannot handle a second wave of this virus, which seems to be more deadly than the first wave. However, not everyone agrees. Residents we spoke to today said the news was a bit upsetting. All we could do is stay home. Stay home and close the door and read the, read the paper like it always does. Watch television. Can't go out and I think that's stupid. That's one of the craziest things I've heard in my life now, you know? It's a bit disappointing, especially how we've been waiting for so long for the beaches to be open. So it's a bit disappointing. Beaches and parks on New Providence, Paradise Island, Grand Bahama and Bimini reopened on June 29th. Along Western Esplanade, we met Arlington Cox, who called on the Prime Minister to give the reasoning behind the decision. I think that he needs to give us more explanation. He just can't say, well, the beach and the park's going to be closed. You're talking about a holiday and you're talking about thousands and thousands of people who, um, who, is, who are used to um, beaching on, on holidays and now we have a temporary open after the country go in so the Prime Minister needs to give us uh, more explanation. He can't just say that. With the usual independent celebrations now virtual, we asked these residents how they plan to celebrate independence this year. No, I guess I suppose I'll have to come up with something but beaches are normally the place that most persons would like to to partake in stay open sleep <laughs> That's, i i have none and I, I it's baffling i plan to to uh stay with the family at home and do some some chores but i also decide to just drive around and enjoy the scenery of the bahamas reporting for our news and bertha new mcdermott PLP leader Philip Davis says there was no excuse for government to grant 135 work permits for Mexican construction workers at Baker's Bay Gulf and Ocean Club on Abaco. The excuse of insufficient qualified Bahamians has run its course and is totally unacceptable. Bahamians built Baker's Bay. Bahamians can repair, renovate and restore Baker's Bay. Immigration Minister Ellsworth Johnson has said while 135 Mexican workers were brought in last week, Baker's Bay has over 420 Bahamians employed and plans to hire more. Davis insists more should have been done to fill the positions with Bahamians during these tough times. Still to come, a man with cerebral palsy beats the odds to become a university graduate. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Member of Parliament for Centerville, Reese Chipman, moved a motion for the appointment of a select committee to investigate the country's natural resources. Mr. Speaker, I have called for a select committee to investigate all matters relative to our natural resources, the natural resources of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, above, on, or below the terrain and or sea to identify the sources of the natural resources that contribute or should contribute to the Sovereign Wealth Fund. The committee must report to the House of Assembly by October or seek an extension. House Speaker Halston Moultrie is expected to name members of the committee when the House meets tomorrow. And a man who has been confined to a wheelchair is celebrating his graduation from the University of the Bahamas. He says he has been beating the odds his entire life. My disability does not define me, but it only an opportunity to share it right in the world. 24-year-old Gregory Cash has been in a wheelchair since birth. Despite my disability, I love to encourage others, I love to speak, I love to, I love to, I love to do the best I can. Cash was diagnosed with cerebral palsy as a child, but that hasn't held him back. He graduated from the University of the Bahamas after studying psychology for five years. Um, it feels awesome because knowing that I was once here and I was 
never going to be inside my normal school. And now today we rise and I was not only able to graduate, but I was able to graduate with honors. Cash admits that his life has been challenging. Cerebral palsy is often associated with communication issues, learning disabilities, and speech and vision impairments. His limited movement means he has relied on family and friends to help him get around. His gratitude for the people in his life is obvious. Uh, many days when I feel down, when it, many days when I feel like giving up, I just have to look at them and know that. If they could do it, I could do it too. Like. Cash makes it a point not to let his disability hinder his progress. In the second grade, he was moved from the special needs stream at Garvin Tynes Primary when teachers realized his aptitude was on par and often exceeded students in the standard stream. At Anatol Rogers High School, he says he had some of the best days of his life. And on my graduating day, everybody stand up and share for me and I could just, I just can remember those moments and it was one of the obvious moments of my life. Cash says his next step is to get his master's degree. He was accepted into a program at Bowery University and wants to study online due to the ongoing pandemic. In terms of his career... So in the NAFUS, I, I open to get into school and education system to be able to teach and help those like me who, are, who may be in a, in a wheelchair or who may face special needs and make an impact in their lives. Still to come, a new era in Bahamian tennis, the details after this. Local tennis heading into a new era with a new president outlining a different approach. Marcellus Hall explains. The sport of tennis, like others, will face a new way of doing things due to COVID-19. The Bahamas Lawn Tennis Association, no different. They'll be doing it, though, with a new man in charge, Perry Newton, elected as president. After a landslide victory, newly elected President Perry Newton steps in as head of the Bahamas Lawn Tennis Association. Former public relations man talked about the decision to run for the association's top post. And I had a lot of encouragement. Um, you know, a few people in the association said that um, it would be good if I ran because they saw the work that I was go doing and uh, the things that I, the initiatives that I was um, pushing. Uh, so it, it wasn't a hard decision to uh, make the leap into running. Having accomplished his goal, Newton says he knows he faces a challenge due to COVID-19. It's a naturally um, distant sport. It isn't a contact sport. So in that sense, we have an advantage over other sports. And, um, you know, we look to continue uh, proper hygiene at our facilities and uh, just continue to encourage our coaches to use proper hygiene and, and make sure that the kids um, distance themselves. So it's good. It, it puts a little limit on the amount of kids that we can have in one area, but you know, we'll be able to work around that. Newton saying the main focus will be continued growth, in particular the youth. We want to be able to create an environment whereas uh, tennis will be able to grow. And to do this, we have to focus on, on uh, getting more coaches certified so we could be able to handle the influx of kids we anticipate to come into the sport. And by doing that, we'll be able to expand our junior development programs and, and uh, continue to grow um, in the various age categories as well as uh, increasing our senior development and our officiating. So we're just trying to create an environment whereas uh, all areas of tennis will be able to be addressed and we'll be able to grow uh, together. And as far as getting back on the court, Newton addressed that issue as well. It, it all depends on how the climate looks internationally. So all of our junior events, international tournaments, has been cancelled for the year. So we'll just have to wait on the word of the ITF, which is the International Tennis Federation, and we'll go along with that. Uh, locally, uh, it's just a matter of us now uh, as a board coming together, and the first tournament that we're going to look to put on is our junior nationals, which has been postponed. That should have um, happened uh, late June, early July. 
So it does indeed sound as if the sport of tennis is in good hands for the foreseeable future. Reporting for our news, I'm Marcellus Hall. Thank you for joining us for our news tonight. To catch our news on the go, download the Rab Go Play app. On behalf of the entire news team, I'm Jared Higgs. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.